Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. It's finally Friday. It was a crazy week this week, but I'm feeling pretty good. It definitely was like the workload this week was crazy in the beginning of the week, and it seems to kind of be tapering off. So today I am doing two labs. I have two labs with my CP chemistry students. We are doing the flame test, one of the probably all-time favorite labs of chemistry students everywhere. So I am going to get set up with that, and then I'll definitely check in with you guys a little bit later, but it will be a little bit more of a crazy day because I've got the double lab today, but I'm hoping to be able to check in with you between my AP classes a little bit later on. I just finished with my morning classes, so I thought I would pop on here and tell you how my lab went this morning. So I started with first period with my flame test lab, and that went really well. One of the things that I do in my class is I flip the labs. So I record pre-lab videos for the students to do. They have to do the pre-lab video in order to be eligible to do the lab. So I usually give them about two days to do it. So they had technically two evenings to make sure that they watch the pre-lab video. And then I also tell them that that if they do not earn a passing score on the video, then they don't do the lab. Fortunately, all my students, they've been great so far. They all have been watching the pre-lab video, so I wasn't kind of caught in a tough spot where I had to tell them, look, you know, you really have to do this or else you can't do the lab. So that went really well. I was really happy to start my day with that. The pre-lab discussion was pretty much, you know, very simple because like I said, I already do that pre-lab video that talks about the safety and introduces the technique. So I didn't really have to talk a lot um, as far as like what you know, the, they were doing the lab because they already had some idea. But the only thing I had to show them was their lab stations and like what's in the lab station where they can locate all of the equipment. Now, I actually had a question for you all. I wanted to know what's your favorite way to do the flame test? Now, I've done the flame test a ton of different ways. So three different ways off the top of my head that I can think of. So I've done the typical like wooden splints where you soak the wooden splints in solution and then the kids will heat them in the Bunsen burner flame. That's kind of nice because the lab prep is really simple, right? You just dump a bunch of the solid, add some water, and and let it soak and then the kids will just grab one and go that makes it really easy but the only thing about that is is that the kids have to be really careful to make sure if they are lighting the splint on fire that it's completely out right they don't want to like throw the splint in the garbage can while it's still on fire so that can be a little nerve-wracking especially with the safety component so I've done it that way um, the other way I've also done it, which is probably my favorite way where the kids take the solid, like the actual solid substance, they dip a um, like cotton swab into some distilled water and then roll the cotton swab in the solid and then hold that in the flame. Now that produces some really vibrant colors. That's why I love it so much. The only downside to that is it's a big old mess. So when the students are heating the solid substance, usually what happens is we see a lot of flaking of the solid on the lab benches. So that makes it a little bit more of a mess. So it can be kind of hard to clean up. But the way that I chose to do the lab today actually is not either of those ways. Instead, I am using a nichrome wire loop. So I guess this is probably the more appropriate way to do it. Um, so I use the nichrome wire loop. I have some solutions in the test tubes and then the students dip the nichrome wire into the test tube and then they can hold it in the flame. And then to avoid cross contamination, I have a little like beaker where the students can just rinse their nichrome wire loop right in the beaker and then grab another sample. I like this way a lot. The only downside is that obviously it takes a lot of prep. You gotta pour all the solutions into the individual test tubes. You need to make sure that the test tubes are all labeled. So so it does take a little bit more prep work, um, but you kind of have to do the same thing, especially if you're doing the solids, right? You have to put all the solids in the test tubes. So I'm not really sure like which one I, I like the best. Probably, I mean, like I already said, I really like the fact that the solid gives you the most vibrant colors, but it's a pain in the neck to clean up. So probably the nichrome wire is the next one because I think that this is right, the more appropriate way to do it, the more sciencey way to do it. And, and it went well. The kids were really great with cross contamination. They used their you know, their distilled water beaker to rinse in between. But then one of my favorite things about this lab, which I've never done until I got to this school, is we started using cobalt blue glass in this lab. So in the lab, we have the students look at samples such as sodium chloride and potassium chloride. And then we have the students look at the individual samples using the cobalt blue glass. So they will, for example, one person will grab the nichrome wire loop, dip it into the sample, one student will hold the 
sample into the flame and then the other students will look at it using the cobalt blue glass. And so what's cool about this is that it only allows certain wavelengths of light through it. So for example, the students won't be able to actually see the sodium chloride solution because it's absorbing all of those oranges. And so um, it's really cool for the kids to see that, you know, that this kind of acts as a filter. And then one of the things that the kids absolutely love to do is they love to hold this up to the classroom clock so they can kind of see the fact that it actually absorbs all the wavelength in the classroom clock. So here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So check it out. Now you see it. Now you don't. I really like this because I think it really drives home the point absorption versus emission. So, you know, it talks about absorbing all the wavelengths of light. It only allows certain frequencies of light, certain energies of light through, right? So when, and then I don't know if I said before, but you know, besides doing the sodium chloride and the potassium chloride, there's also a mixture. And so with the mixture, what's kind of cool is that the kids will only see the purple light given off by the potassium chloride. So that's kind of neat too, is that they can see that and they say, oh yeah, now I understand this acts more as a filter and filters out the yellow and the orange so that we can only see the high energy frequencies coming through. I've got my next AP class coming in, but I, like I said, I'm curious to see what is your favorite way to do the flame test? Is it the nichrome wire or do you like the splints or do you like the swabs or is it none of the above? I'd love to know what it is. Leave a comment down below. I will check in with you guys in a little bit. I just finished with the last period of the day. Um, my ninth period chemistry class had lab during period nine and period 10. Um, there are 29 students in that class and it was like totally crazy. Um, I was a lot more on edge in that class because there's just so many kids and I feel like I can't be everywhere at once. Um, so I was pretty nervous. I'm always very nervous and I have a lot of anxiety when I'm doing lab in that class because there's just so many kids and I'm just worried about them, you know, hurting somebody, hurting themselves. Um, but fortunately it was okay. There were no issues. Um, the kids did a great job with the lab. They really avoided cross contamination. They were doing a great job with the wire loops. One of the mistakes that the kids always make is they hold the nichrome wire loop into the flame for a really long time. And so they think that every single color from the flame test is orange. And so um, they were very good with that. So I didn't really find that that was an issue. Um, and so now, you know, I'm just getting ready to go home. Um, I uh, will be giving the students a post lab quiz on Monday. I think I'm gonna do it in a Google form because I think I'm going to have them write a claim evidence reasoning for the lab. I'm not really sure what exactly it's going to be on. I'm probably thinking about them providing supporting details for like what the unknown would be. I already had them write a CER for what part of the compound is responsible for the color that we see. Um, and so they did a pretty good job with that. You know, they did take some prompting and I did have to spend a little bit of time talking about some good things to include in the reasoning. Reasoning is always something that students struggle with. So we talked about some things to include and um, I think it went really well. So they'll take their post lab quiz on Monday and then we'll be moving moving into talking about electron configurations. So like I said earlier, I'd really love to know how you do your flame test. Please leave a comment down below and tell me your favorite way to do it. Maybe I'll try it when I do it with my AP chemistry students a little bit later on in the school year. Either way, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll definitely check in with you guys next week.